Hello and welcome to the Tank Spot Throne of the Four Winds Raid Guide. My name is Eliana and in this video I'll show you all you have to know about the Conclave of Wind, the first encounter in this new raid instance. We completed this fight with two tanks, three healers, and five DPS, but similar raid configurations may work just as well. The Conclave is a council type encounter where you fight three djinn at the same time, but this fight comes with a twist. All three enemies are on different platforms and while you can move between the platforms by jumping into the wind streams, you have to split up your raid intelligently to make it work. On top of that, each conclave member has to die within a minute of the first one's death, or the first djinn will regain all his health. The three djinn are Anshal, Nazir, and Rohash. Rohash does basic wind attacks and can easily be tanked by a healer or a ranged raid member. Ideally, you want to leave one healer and two ranged raid members with him for most of the fight. Anshal is a nature-based enemy that spawns adds and will require a tank and a healer along with your leftover DPS. Nizir is ice-based and will also require a tank and a healer. This fight would be simple if it wasn't for the fact that all of the Jin have an energy bar, and when their energy bar is full, in other words when it reaches 90, they will execute their ultimate abilities. All Jin will reach full energy at the same time and you can never leave a platform completely abandoned or it will result in a raid wipe. Let's go over the Jin's abilities. Rohash is fairly straightforward. He has a Wind Slash with which he'll attack from a range. Occasionally a few Cyclones will soak around his platform. Obviously you don't want to get caught in one of these or you'll take damage and get knocked back. And on a timer he uses Wind Blast, an ability that makes him slowly spin around the platform and anyone in front of his face will get knocked back 200 yards. Yes, 200. You have been warned. This works similarly to the Lurkers Below Spout. If you were an active raider in the Burning Crusade, you may remember it. His ultimate ability is Hurricane, which creates a huge vortex of wind and anyone on the platform will get lifted up and take continuous damage for 15 seconds, after which you get dropped to the floor and take more fall damage. It's pretty much the same as Maligos' vortex ability. This is easily healed through. Anshalt's first ability that you'll see is called Soothing Winds and looks like a green circle that he puts on the ground. It heals all of Anshalt's allies and silences enemies, so pull him and his adds out of it and stay away from it yourself. His second ability, Nurture, will summon multiple ravenous creeper adds that will use toxic spores, an AoE aura that deals stacking damage to anyone within 8 yards. These kinda hurt, especially since your melee are likely at this platform, so they should be taken out quickly. His ultimate ability is Zephyr, which heals all of his allies currently on the platform by 25,000 per second and gives them 15% increased damage for 15 seconds. Make sure that no adds are out by the time Enshell casts Zephyr, and this should not pose a problem. Lastly, Nazir. Nazir is where it gets complicated. Nazir has both a channeled cone spell that deals frost damage called permafrost and an ice puddle he puts on the ground that deals frost damage and slows anybody in it. His main ability is Wind Chill, which deals frost damage to everyone on the platform and more importantly increases their frost damage taken by 10% per stack. Combined with his other abilities, this means that anyone remaining on the platform for too long will get killed outright. His ultimate ability is called Sleet Storm. Sleet Storm deals about 30,000 damage per second to anyone on the platform for 15 seconds. However, Sleet Storm's damage is divided by everyone on the platform. So as you can see, you want to have as many people as possible on Nazir's platform when his energy bar is about to turn full. However, you also need to switch Nazir's tank and healer team with Anshell's tank and healer team periodically to avoid getting too many stacks of the debuff, and at the same time you want to avoid switching too much, so you have to find a good balance. What worked well for us was to switch the teams right before the Jin cast their first ultimate. The DPS from both other platforms also need to be at Nazir's platform before every ultimate that he casts. While a single healer remains at Rohash and the original Nazir tank and healer team fills in at Anshal. After the ultimate finishes, the DPS return to their original platforms. The original Anshal tank and healer team however remains at Nazir's platform until right before his second ultimate takes place which is when they change places with the tank and healer team that filled in at Anshal again. This cycle repeats until the Jinn are low on health, which could be as soon as after the second ultimate. Rohash and Anshal will likely be a lot lower in health than Nazir, but that's okay. When you're at the point that you can finish off both Rohash and Anshal around roughly the same time, do so. Afterwards, everyone should move over to Nazir's platform and finish him off. You have about a minute to do this, so the timer is lenient. It is worth noting that you cannot switch platforms in the 15 seconds that the Jin cast their ultimates, so any switching of platforms has to occur at about 80 energy to account for travel time. 
I've attached the full encounter so you can see how we dealt with the various mechanics in detail. Good luck and have fun! As you can see, I start out at Anchild's platform uh, along with our melee team and a Death Knight tank. This is shortly after engaging them, um, right before their first ultimate. It's coming up soonish here. They're at about 60-70% um, energy. So what we're doing is we're finishing off the adds. The melee are actually taking quite a bit of damage here. Uh, it's kind of tough to heal since Prisa is very mana and efficient right now. But I'm trying to conserve my mana because Nazir is going to be much, much worse than this. So we're just waiting for our chance to hop over, which is coming up here. So into the wind we go. Whee! And you can see the other tank and healer team is switching over here right as Nazir is starting his ultimate. Now, um, tanks running in, everybody's running into DPS. Uh, the other platform, Rohash's platform, is over here too. Uh, we had a warlock and a hunter on there. So everybody is just putting full DPS on Nizir until his ult's over. Then all the DPS return to their original platforms. The hunter and the warlock are going back and our melee are going back to um, Aunt Shell over there. While the DK tank and I remain here at this platform and we're stacking up our debuff. While the, um, the original Nizir team is at Aunt Shell right now with our melee DPS. So this is really kind of challenging to heal for me right now because, as I said, my mana is kind of crap right now. And um, Nazir deals a ton of damage, especially since we're stacking the debuff up pretty high here. I think we get to like 8, 9 stacks-ish. Uh, takes a while, of course, uh, but we just kind of hang out here until the, uh, the second ultimate's coming up. We figured out that when we switched too much, uh, people would just die in the in the switching because the ads would wail on people or uh, Nizia would put a patch of eyes right where people would come in. So it was just a lot more hassle than it was worth it. So we just decided to deal with the increased damage taken here. And as you can see, this is draining my mana really quickly and there's really not much I can do about it. Um, Blizzard did announce a hotfix, so I'm happy about that. But anyway, uh, his... Energy is up now, so we're about to switch back here. As you can see, the DPS is starting to trickle in for the ultimate. And uh, my tank's going back. I'm a little behind. I'm a little late. I barely make it at 90, which I shouldn't be able to do, but I must have just caught the, uh, the good spot there. So we're back at our original platform. The other tank and healer team is back at their original platform. They're all wailing on, uh, on his ear. And... As soon as that's over, our DPS is going to be trickling in again. The Warlock and the Hunter are going to go back to Rohash, where another Priest healer is just the entire encounter, really. So, yeah, it was pretty boring for him, I would imagine. Now, our DPS is back here, and we're just wailing on Anshell now, because Rohash is low, so we figure we can finish them off both pretty close to each other, and then all go to Nazir's platform, which, as you can see, is right below half health, so that's quite a bit of damage that he needs. But when you have two of them low, which probably will be Rohash and Anshell, uh, finish them off as close to each other as possible. Uh, as you can see, Rohash just died. Um, Anshell here is about to die. Yep, there it goes. And now we're all going back to um, to Nazir to finish him off. Now, if we had a Bloodlust, we'd probably use it right here or just before then, but we don't. So we just kind of wail on him, keeping everybody up. Uh, his energy is not quite back up to the ultimate. We finish him off before his third ultimate. So if that's a uh, DPS marker or whatever, there you have it. We finished him before the third ultimate, but... I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever, it's just how we did it. So yeah, it's about all the tips I have and uh, I wish you good luck and have fun, it's a really fun encounter.